from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Today it is my special privilege to introduce to you John J. Muth, who is, of course, our festival poster artist for this year. And those... <laughs> Of course, you see it reproduced here on our program as well, and the art is being used throughout our signage on the grounds. Um, Mr. Muth has uh, produced the poster, which is available for free at the back of this pavilion and also at the information booths, and we hope you'll take your copy home today. John J. Muth's illustrated picture books are beloved around the world and have been translated into more than 10 languages. A native of Ohio, he had his first one-man exhibition of paintings and drawings at the invitation of Wilmington College when he was 18. He studied stone sculpture in Japan, paintings, prints, and drawings in Austria, Germany, and England, and was an English major at the State University of New York, New Paltz. But most of his education as an artist came from an informal apprenticeship with two fine artists. His comic books have been published by DC Vertigo, Eclipse Books, NBM, Donald, Donald M. Grant Publishers, Inc., and in Japan, Kodansha. He has also worked in music, uh, in a combined efforts with musicians, and was commissioned by the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra to paint a portrait of music director Jesus Lopez Cobos. Two books about his paintings, titled Vanitas, Paintings, Drawings, and Ideas, and Koan, have been published. He has received many awards and an extensive critical acclaim. His book, Zen Shorts, was named a Caldecott Honor Book and spent 41 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, he is also, of course, the author of the very famous books, Zen Ties, and his more recent book, Zen Ghosts. And I am pleased to let you know that you've probably already figured this out by now. Uh, the Bear Stillwater is in our National Book Festival poster. Mr. Muth lives in upstate New York with his wife and four children, where he spends time chasing the clouds from his brushes. Ladies and gentlemen, John J. Muth. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me here? It's okay? It's nice that you could all come out today. I really, I really appreciate it. And they gave me the kind of microphone that I don't have to yell, which is great, because my mom says that I talk really quiet. I kind of mumble, so this is good for me. And it's nice to see so many different kinds of people here today. I'm gonna, you know, we've got these very, very old folks right up front, and then slightly, you know, younger, scattered throughout. And I'll try and say something <laughs> that might speak to all of you. I, I'll, uh, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself, um, just a little, and then maybe a little bit about uh, the characters that I've been able to to know through my writing and illustrating, and um, maybe I'd read a little bit from Zen Ghosts, and then um, if we've got time, maybe I would draw and show you one of a couple of the ways that I try to draw. Does that sound good to you? Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, I've been drawing as long as I can remember. My mother says I showed up with a pencil. So I, sorry, mom. Um, so I didn't ever really feel like I had to pick being an artist. I just always drew. And I always drew things that I wanted to exist, maybe that didn't exist. So it was a kind of a natural thing to start putting words with pictures. And, and I've been doing that as long as I can remember before I knew anything about what comics were or uh, Anything like that. So my. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hearing angels. I, <laughs> sorry. Um, the. Um, where was I? Okay. Yes. Right. So uh, when I got to be uh, uh, of college age, I ended up studying with um, with two painters in different s situations in life. One was in Ohio, and another was in New York. And one of them was a kind of neo-Dadaist, and the uh, other one was a realist, a kind of guy who drew things very realistically. And I was very fortunate because these were very strong painters, and they weren't looking for pupils, so I had to kind of sneak to be their students. I learned without them really even realizing I was becoming their students. Um, 
And um, so when my children were born, it sort of became, uh, I had been working in comics to be able to, you know, to, to, to further what it is that I wanted to do. And I ended up um, doing a lot of things in comics and learning a lot about how storytelling works, you know, what words go with what pictures and what kinds of, um, what your mind does when you've got that combination of, of things. Um, I think comics is really great for that. The other, uh, well then when, when my children were born, as I was saying, I, I, um, I decided I wanted to talk about the kind of things that comics didn't really have a lot of room for. It's like uh, there was Batman, and then there was the stuff I wanted to do. So uh, they didn't really go together very well at the time. So I decided I would try and do some things for children's books, and that's how I started working on kids' books. Um, I worked in Japan for a little while doing a comic strip about a uh, father and son, and uh, so I was able to begin my sort of transition into doing things for children. And when I came to the United States, I kind of came to the United States with the bound edition of the first year of this this uh, serial, and tried to get it to a took it to a comic book publisher, and I said, I, I wonder if you'd be interested in publishing this. And they said, well, this is really great. We really love this, but it's a children's book, so maybe you should take it to a children's book you know, uh, publisher. And I, so I, I said, okay. And I, uh, I left, and I took those, uh, that book to a children's book publisher. And they said, this is really great, but we don't really publish comics. So I said, uh, okay. So I kind of went home. And um, about a week later, I got a phone call from a friend, a person who's become a very good friend, uh, David Saylor. He's the art director at Scholastic. And he said, you know, I know you weren't really looking to do children's books, per se, but would you mind taking a look at this script we got as text? It's really, I think it's a neat story, and maybe you'll respond to it. And so uh, they sent it to me. I said, yeah, sure. And uh, they sent it to me, and I read it, and it was called Come on Rain. And when I read it, the f I just knew exactly what all the pictures looked like. So it was a very easy book to say yes to. It was beautifully written, and I was very honored to be offered that book. So that was my first book in children's books. And I said, this is kind of fun. So I started writing for all you old folks up here. And, um, and actually, by extension, uh, for myself, too, through you. Um, and I feel very at home in children's books, and I've got uh, two four-year-old twins that may be showing up at some point to, to steal the show. I don't know. But, um, so it's, it's a kind of an ongoing thing. Um, so when I started writing for children, I would go on tour and I'd visit schools where you might have been, right? And on the first book I wrote that, that I did myself, um, writing and illustrating, called The Three Questions. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, that was from a story written by Leo Tolstoy. And I was very lucky to sort of sit on the shoulders of that giant for that book. Um, but when I was out visiting the schools, uh, I got the chance to see what kinds of questions you had about those books and what it was I was doing. And so I realized I wanted to actually have a kind of dialogue that was different. And as I was out wandering around with uh, my books and talking to, to, to you, I found out that, um, or I thought, what would it be like to live down the street from someone who was a kind of spiritual teacher? And, but not like uh, anyone I'd ever encountered before. You know, someone you would go over and have peanut butter and jelly with. And so I came up with this character, and his name is Stillwater. And he was, he was a panda. And I don't know why he's the one who showed up in my stories, but he is. And he lives next door, or down the street, rather, from uh, three kids. One's name is Carl, and the other one's name is Addie, and the oldest boy's name is Michael. And these are all based on people that I know. The oldest girl, Addie, is actually based on my daughter, Adeline. And the, uh, the, the, old bo the older boy, Nick, uh, Michael, is based on my son, Nikolai, who makes his first appearance in The Three Questions. And um, Carl is based on my nephew, Carl, and I swear, uh, if you've read these books or know these, these characters at all, I haven't made anything up. <laughs> it's true. 
So in the first book, we got to introduce these characters to each other. Stillwater met Addie, Michael, and Carl. And then in the second book, the, the four of them have an adventure together where they go and meet this older lady who needs a bit of help. Her name's Mrs. Whitaker, and, and they find out that maybe Mrs. Whitaker can actually help them. So that was kind of neat, that was fun. And in this one, um, Stillwater seems to be ready to tell them a ghost story. So I thought I'd read a little bit of this to you. Is that all right, yeah, that's good? Okay. All right. Zen ghosts. And I will announce some of the stuff that's in the imagery because you can't see it from where you are. But right here you see Stillwater is putting things into this uh, person, giant rabbit, into their uh, Halloween basket. And it looks like he's got treats, and the treats include a, a, a carrot. So you would give a giant rabbit a carrot, right? Yeah, okay. Zen ghosts. Michael, there's a ghost outside, said Carl. A what? asked Michael. A big, scary-looking ghost, said Carl. Is it Stillwater, asked Michael. I don't, I, it doesn't have Stillwater's face, said Carl. Oh, wait. Yes, he does. Come in. Hi, Stillwater. So St Stillwater's on the porch, and he's got, he's bowing, and on the top of his head, he has a mask, a fox mask. Hi, Stillwater, said Addie. Happy almost Halloween. We're working on our costumes. I'm going to be a moon princess. What are you going to be? And Addie's coming down the steps. And Carl's welcoming Stillwater in. I am a ghost, said Stillwater. What are you going to be, he asked Michael and Carl. I'm going to be a monster, said Carl, with powerful atomic heat ray and... Well, so with a powerful heat ray and atomic breath, I will cause awesome destruction. I haven't decided what I'm going to be, said Michael. Either an owl or a pirate. I like owls and I like pirates. Perhaps you will be an owl pirate, said Stillwater. He can't be an owl pirate, said Carl. There's no such thing as an owl pirate. He has to be one thing. He can be whatever he wants, said Addie. Look, Stillwater, do you like my costume? And you can see she's got this long flowing gown. And in it, there are these little shapes that look a little bit like maybe butterflies or moths. And you can see Carl's trying on parts of his costume. He's actually pretty ferocious. And he's got a, a monster, I think it's a mask. He's got a monster head and monster feet. And in this picture, Stillwater seems to be watching some shapes fluttering up into the air, sort of like the ones that were on Addie's dress. Yes, said Stillwater. I like your dress. This is, this, it reminds me of something. This is a very special Halloween. There's going to be a full moon, and I know someone who will tell you a ghost story. Yay, said Addie. I love ghost stories, said Michael. It's not too scary, is it, asked Carl. After trick-or-treating, meet me by the old stone wall and I will take you to the storyteller, said Stillwater. And they all waved goodbye to him there. Now this is Halloween night, and I know you're not going to be able to see this very well, but there's all kinds of folks out on the street. And that's one of the things I love most about Halloween is going out and finding just goblins and ghosts and all sorts of folks that are uh, trouncing around. We've got two folks dressed up as a unicorn, right? And um, there's a football player and a princess and a couple of pumpkins are running around. Just, and a witch who seems to actually be flying, right? And there was a super bunny or something, I don't know, and some ghosts, and a, there's the guy with the giant bunny suit, right? Yeah, and the nice thing about Halloween night, if you go in at nighttime, is you can't really tell, you know, are they real? I don't know. This guy's dressed as a bunch of grapes, and here's a mom carrying a small prisoner. And a, and a monkey who wants to be a cowboy, and we've got a fellow on stilts, or maybe not. So, when the children were done trick-or-treating, they waited by the stone wall. I'll trade you three tiny mints for one snookers, said Addie. No, said Carl, I'm not giving up my snookers. 
But you don't even like them, said Addie. Come on. I only like tiny mints if they're the crunch peppermint kind, said Carl. Besides, I'm saving my snookers. I have one flavored like bam. Boo, said Stillwater. Wow, you scared me, said Carl. How long have you been there? You can see Stillwater sort of appears up by the tree, right? Follow me, said Stillwater. I've never gone this way before, said Michael. Me neither, said Carl. I think I have, said Addie. And here we've got Stillwater's carrying uh, a lantern. And fluttering around that lantern are a couple of the uh, shapes like that were on Addie's dress, right? Maybe like moths. You know how moths chase the, the light? In a few moments, they arrived in st at Stillwater's house. He's very misty, said Addie. Come in, said Stillwater. They all sat facing the front of the room. Then a panda, who looked exactly like Stillwater, came in and sat down. Is that Stillwater, whispered Carl. Yes, no, no. Shh, I don't know. Shh, quiet, whispered Michael. The panda held up a brush and said, I am going to draw you a story. So you can see he's sitting there and there's a candle. And he looks really calm, doesn't he? Once, a long time ago, there was a young girl named Senjo. Her parents loved her very much and they took very good care of her. And that's all I'm gonna read to you. <laughs> you have to see what happens. So I thought I would draw you something. Is that all right? We'll do that now, right? Now, when I'm painting, I, 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 I like to draw and paint in a lot of different ways. Uh, one of the ways is to, uh, one of the ways I like to get started in the morning before I begin my little drawings is to work very large. And I use big pieces of paper. Usually I put them on the floor. And I thought I would bring special brushes today to show you guys. And I, like I said, I like, to, I like to work really big. So I brought some of the, some of the brushes. This brush is from Japan. And um, he's kind of a nice brush. He work, I, I like working with him. Uh, there's also, this is a brush that was a gift. And this handle is made of stone. It's made of jade. And you know, my brushes are kind of like brothers and sisters. Sometimes I get along with them and sometimes I don't. So it's good to bring several along. <laughs> But you would think this was a really heavy brush, but it's not. It's balanced just right. And just so you can have an introduction, we've also got this guy. And this has goat's hair, so he's very floppy. He's very soft. And all of these other, uh, these two brushes are from China. And um, so often I'll begin my day by doing large movements. Uh, with a brush and ink so that I get my whole body involved in drawing the pictures because it's a lot of fun Even when you end up drawing little pictures It's nice to have a sense that your whole self is in, involved in the picture and that's one way to do it So let me start with um, I think we'll pick the medium sibling here and um, now when I'm when I'm painting at home, I'll use uh, what's called sume ink it's sume and it's ink made from a carbon stone. Oh, this is, give me a second so that we don't uh, splatter everyone. <laughs> it's a little messy. It's made the trip with me from New York. It's all black, so you couldn't see it anyway, but often I'll start by grinding. This, this ink, this very black ink is made by grinding two stones together and you'll drop a little bit of water in a plate that's made of stone, and you'll take a black stone and you'll grind it and grind it until it gets blacker and blacker, and you add a little more water and you grind it and grind it. And when the monks or the artists or the artisans are preparing themselves to paint, 
they're not just grinding the stone to prepare the ink, they're grinding, grinding the stone and, and water to prepare themselves. So it quiets their mind and they're very prepared for whatever may happen on the paper. Now I like to draw, sometimes I like to make stuff up. Do you like to make stuff up, anybody? Yeah, and other times it's kind of fun to take and find things. When you're looking at clouds, do you ever find like pictures of things that you're not expecting, like a dragon or a dog or your uncle or things like that? Yeah, so why don't we try and make a mark without any intention and see what that mark suggests to us. That's one way of drawing. Let's try that. We'll do that first. So. I have a hard time talking and uh, drawing at the same time, so I appreciate you guys. Uh, having room for that. Does this look like anything to us yet? It's a very important thing to remember. How many of you have had pictures that don't work? Yeah, me too. I'm glad to know that I'm not alone. So it's good to keep that in mind. Do you see anything at all? Does it suggest? Okay, if you got in mind, got it in mind, hold on to it. Don't tell me. Hold on, hold on. You have one in mind too. Okay, hold on to it. We'll see if yours lines up with what my what I see. I'm gonna work on it a little bit and see if I can show you what I'm seeing. Often, if I'm drawing like this, I'm able to run across the room in this studio and take a look at it from far away, but I would fall if I did that here, so. Well, how many of you see something now? Anybody? That's right. You probably see exactly what I saw. Maybe I just, being in Washington, maybe they just showed up. The Republicans just, I swear I wasn't tan planning that. So. Think. Yeah, you think? Is that sort of close to? It's a monster. <laughs> no, it's an elephant. It's not a monster. <laughs> but we'll just let that resonate for a moment. Thank you. <laughs> See, I don't ever get applause in my studio. I'm by myself, so this is very nice. Thanks. Um, so let's try. How are we for time? We're, good, we're okay. Okay. Let's try uh, another picture. And this time, I have something in mind. Now, in the first uh, Zen Zen Shorts book, it took place in spring, and. Um, the second one took place in summer, kind of late summer. And uh, the third one, where does it look like maybe that one took place? October, so what, what season is that? Fall, very good, yes. So which season is missing? Winter, right, right. So the next and final book of, of the Stillwater stories is going to take place in winter, and I think it's called Zen Snow. So. I've been thinking about the fun stuff to do in wintertime, so um, I've been working on this one image. Let's see if I can do it again. So I've got something in mind here, unlike the last one, promise. 
Okay. Now there's only a few, I know none of you over there can see this, I apologize for that. But there's just a few lines. That's one of the things I like about this kind of brush is it doesn't take too many, too many lines to sort of have something show up. Now I'm, are you starting to see something? No, not yet? An eyeball. No, not an eyeball. You know what it is? Okay, let's see if I, if I can finish it up in enough time that you can, I won't lose you all. So. Okay. So one of the things I really like doing in the wintertime is sled riding. So I was trying to imagine what it would be like if I were still water and I was gonna go sled riding, I'm pretty s sure he would need something, you know, a little bigger. S so. There we go. He probably would need an inner tube to a really big truck. That's my thinking. <laughs> Some sort of. <laughs> so, just to kind of. So, you sort of get an idea of what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so what I thought I'd do now is maybe take some uh, questions. If anybody's got, oh, you know, we, or just something you want to say, or, or, whoop. You have a question? One second. Let me. Uh... Yes. What's your question, Judd? Who said that? Okay. This gentleman up front. I beg your pardon. You said something. I did. Your dad read you some Stillwater books? In, in the car on the way here. Was he driving too? <laughs> oh, your mom was driving. Good, okay. Well, that's good. So you had some familiarity. Yeah. Um, let me get someone. Oh, okay. If anyone would like to ask me a question, there's a microphone, I'm told. So you, wanna, you can kind of line up here or there. And I guess that's how we'll get it. I'm just, this is, I feel like Star Wars with all this. Thank you. Hello. Um, my daughter really enjoys Van Gogh's, and she wants to know at the end which panda is the real Stillwater. Ah, which, which panda is the real Stillwater? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think I can answer that. <laughs> it's, I, but I'm really glad you like Zen Ghosts, and, uh, and I hope you'll keep puzzling over it, because I have to keep puzzling over it myself. Thank you. <laughs> yes, over here. Yeah. Um, do you know what the, uh, wh where do you get the name Stillwater from? Where did they get the name? That's a great question. Where did they get the name Stillwater? Was, um, I, I came up with Stillwater because I'd done a picture of a panda wearing a very fat w pair of pants. And I had no idea what it was about, but I thought it was, it made me laugh, so I put it in a drawer. And when I thought of that character, I wanted to know what kind of character would this be that I wanted to talk about? You know, who, what, who's the spiritual teacher I wanted to live down the street from? And I thought, he's probably a Zen teacher. And, um, and I started to think about what Zen teachers keep in mind and how they clarify things and how when you've got a puddle that is still, you can see reflections, right? But if the puddle's moving, you can't really see as well. Your mind is the same way. If 
If your mind is still, you tend to be ready for what's coming. But if you're agitated and you're worried about what you did here and what you did there, it's harder. So still water seemed like a pretty good name for a Zen panda. Thank you. Thank you. Over here, okay. Um, why did you call the books, um, why didn't you call them um, still water? Because they all have still water in them. That's true, they all have still water in them. Why didn't I call, I don't know. I, I think my publishers would have preferred that. <laughs> <laughs> but it seemed like they had an overarching idea um, and, and that I, I, I wanted to say the word Zen in the title and then nowhere else. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the question. Right. I really like your books. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I really like your books, too. Oh. Well, thank um, you very much. My question is, have you ever had any Zen or Buddhist training? And who was your inspiration, or what was your inspiration for Ku? <laughs> uh, Ku is uh, Stillwater's nephew, and he speaks only in haiku. Um, and he's in the second book. Uh, and he may come back. Uh, I am a very poor Zen student, and have been for a long time. So, uh, but I spend <laughs> I spend a lot of time near in a monastery that's uh, nearby, and uh, my family visits there. And so, um, and yeah, Ku was just someone I wanted. I knew Stillwater had relatives. I just he just showed up. So in my drawing, thanks for the question. Um, are you gonna make any more uh, series of? Am I going to make any more? Hmm. I don't have any plans. I know I want to do Zen Snow, but after that, I, I will have to sort of see. I okay, don't thanks. Yeah, thanks for the question. What does haiku mean? Ah, okay. What does haiku mean? Well, in Japan, there is a form of poetry, and it's very short, and it usually has 17 syllables and it's called haiku. And I used the play on words in, in the second, in Zen Ties, and I had Ku show up, and Stillwater says, hi, Ku. And, uh, I get that. I beg your indulgence. <laughs> um, um, so I thought that was a kind of a nice way for Ku to speak would be to use the idea of the 17 syllables. I was not very strict, but I was, uh, I tried to be at least uh, in the spirit of it. Do we have, yeah? Do you write all the time? Do I write? All? Actually, I don't. I don't, I, I write on, you know, little bits in different books of, I mean, drawing pads and stuff, but I don't write all the time and I wish I did. I, I my writing would get much better. <laughs> I did. Thank you. Thanks for the question. You go, go grab a uh, mic. You can go, go up and get on a microphone. Yes. So Zen Short is one of the best that I ever read to my children. And they have a hard time now finding all the great books. Could you tell me what you read yourself to your children? Thank you. Um, well, I, I kind of think the books that are available for children um, that are it, age appropriate, there are some really wonderful contemplative kinds of books available, but I like all kinds. I like silly books, like Mo Willem's books are hilarious to me, and I think reading needs to be a whole feast of different things, and then children will gravitate towards the parts that, that get hold of them, and get their spirit. Um, there are some books in Europe that I like very much. Wolf Earlbrook does some marvelous books which speak to very big issues, um, and um, so I, I kind of think there's a lot of stuff in some different languages that haven't been published here. And, um, but, uh, but actually, I can find it in any bookstore, find great stuff. So thanks for your question. That's yeah. My question is, what was your favorite art painting that inspired you to do art? What is my, that's a great question. What is my favorite painting that inspired? 
Well, when I was little, my mom would take me to museums all over. She was an art teacher. So she'd take me to all these different museums. And I remember one painting that was really just stuck in my mind uh, by a painter named Caravaggio. And I remember the light coming in the window and there was some drama going on. Someone was, you know, killing somebody or something. And I just looked at the painting. I thought, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So that one had a big influence on me. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I want, like, still water. He wants to know how you start writing your still water books. How did I start writing the still water books? Uh, he started out as a drawing of a panda, and I put a large pair of shorts on him, and I didn't know what the picture was about, but I kept the picture and it made me laugh. Do you think you would laugh at a picture of a panda with a big pair of pants on? Exactly. Would you laugh at a panda? No, no, he's asking you, would you laugh at a panda? Yeah. So that's how he started. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks for your question. Which is the favorite of the books you made, the oh. Zen books? Which is my favorite Zen book? The one I'm about to do. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a hard question. It's hard. I mean, I love them all when I'm working right on them, and then, you know, and then, you know, you read them again, you go, oh, I could have done that so much better. And then you read them again, and you go, oh, no, that was really good. That was not bad. And then, so you kind of, it's like, I guess it's like children. You, you love them all, but you have a good time with them different times. Well, I, uh, do we have, if there's, okay, this gentleman was kind enough to find a mic, yeah. What's your favorite book that you've written? What's my favorite book that I've written? That's also hard to answer, but uh, I think my uh, favorite um, book uh, today is, uh, I didn't write it, but let me show you. It's not out yet. Uh, I just finished this book called, uh, blowing in the wind. It doesn't actually exist in the United States yet. It's being brought over here, but it'll be published in a couple of days. So, so this is me hawking my next wares. <laughs> it's uh, based on Bob Dylan's book, uh, song. I know, I saw your t-shirt. Made me think of this. Um, I was, uh, I was uh, honored to be asked to put a story with the lyrics of his song, Blowing in the Wind. So. This is the next book, and I'm really happy that it, that it came out the way it did. So, thank you guys for coming today and listening to me. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.